Good morning. This is Bill from Curious Cars and Auto House of Naples on, you know what, you know it. You already know what's coming. It is another epically shitty Naples, Florida morning. It really is just awful. I mean, you can tell from the condensation that's already on this car. Uh, I just drove it over here, you know, a 20-minute trip. It was dry as a bone, of course, because it had wind flowing over it. I parked for four minutes, and the mist is covering it because of the thick humidity in the air. It just sucks. Uh, when I was driving here this morning, I did see some deer on the road. They looked vicious. They looked angry. Uh, thank God I was in a car with the windows up. Uh, I was testing the uh, night vision at the time because I knew I wouldn't be able to get to it now when it's light out. So uh, I'll be interjecting that. Uh, uh, later on into the video. Anyway, look, I'm not going to keep going on about it. And in fact, this is going to be a fairly short review. I know I promised that yesterday uh, with that Chrysler Imperial. I swear I meant for that to be a fairly short review. And it ended up being like 48 minutes, which is absolutely insane. I mean, I don't know if I'm going to have to start splitting them into two parts or whatever. But uh, Apparently, I have this tendency to ramble, and I, it's in no small part because of the coronavirus whiskey, of which I've had copious amounts this morning. Copious amounts, for a variety of reasons. Uh, a, obviously, to tackle the coronavirus. When I'm loaded up on that, there's no way that shit's getting to me. And number two, uh, that and, you know, a variety of pills just help get me through the day, you know, when I'm dealing with the people at work, when Dalton's explaining to me what he's going to do to detail a car, and and I just want to go, you know, I just want to go anywhere but have to listen to that. And uh, having intoxicants in my system is just a fantastic way to get through that uh, without uh, suffering too much mentally. But that said, we're going to leap, <clears throat> jump, run straight into this car and review it. And I picked this car for a couple of reasons. One, because I just bought it. And honestly, I'd like to sell it. Uh, number two, because I've been doing a lot of Yank Tanks, as they're called recently, a lot of American cars and, uh, you know, historically, uh, being part of Audi Europa and, uh, you know, with that, when I started the channel with Peter, Audi Europa, and then Audi Europa of Navy, and so on, we did a lot of European cars, and so there's probably a few subscribers out there who would still like to see something other than a friggin' malaise era person in luxury coupe, and I don't blame you, so here it is, here it is for you. This is a 2012 Mercedes-Benz CL550. Uh, this one is a formatic as I believe the CL came standard in America, the 550 in 2012 with the formatic, but don't hold me to it, but I believe so. And uh, it's the, uh, the C216, and it's the third generation CL. Uh, but it is very much the S-Class Coupe as the, um, you know, there's, for quite a long time, there's been versions of the S-Class Coupe, and uh, this is one of them. At a certain point, they started calling them the CL, uh, which was, you know, from 92 to 2014, they were produced, three generations. Uh, you had the 140 Coupe, uh, which uh, is one of the most fascinating cars Mercedes ever did. I've reviewed a couple of them, and I'll put links to that in the description. Uh, the 140 was incredible. It was the most overbuilt, you know, engineers have no limits, accountants in the basement car that maybe Mercedes-Benz ever did. And in so many ways, it was awesome. And in so many other ways, it was terrible. Uh, but for whatever reason, it just was. And that was the 140. Uh, the next generation was the 220, and that was the C215 uh, coupe. And the 220 was... You know, some people blame Chrysler and say it was a, you know, a Chrysler S-Class that was designed to uh, be cheaper and more profitable. And in some, in some ways, that's true, but not really. I mean, the, the main thrux of the 220 car uh, was was the issues with the 140 and just how overcomplicated it was and how difficult to repair and how expensive it was and how out of reach it was for many buyers. Uh, the 220 car was an answer to... Look at the mist on the trunk. Well, what are you going to do? Anyway, the 220 car was an answer to that, and it kind of was lighter, smaller, yes, cheaper, and not entirely, you know, but look, look at the car that it followed. I mean, I don't care what came out after a 140 car. It was going to look diminished in comparison. Uh, there was just nothing like that at the time. 
I really liked that CL. Uh, I thought it was a great car. It had the coolest door hinges on the planet. And uh, of course, a variety of AMG versions and whatnot. And I really liked that car, but I like this one better. <clears throat> I remember when the 221 came out and it just seems like Mercedes is always having to answer their critics. And probably with good reason, because there's very few car companies that are as historical as Mercedes and as driven by their customer base. Now, you know, after the 126 cars, which are far and away my favorite Mercedes-Benz cars of all time, and I don't think it's just because they're of my era, uh, I think they really hit a pinnacle. Uh, of, and it was the most perfect mix of technology and classic engineering, and the last, in my mind, true limited production, luxury class, collectible class, uh, high-end Mercedes car that was built to a standard. It had nothing to do with the accountants. It was just built to a technological and engineering standard, and it was fantastic. Uh, but Mercedes-Benz could never have survived in this modern world just building cars like that. They just couldn't. I mean, if you made a 126 today with the same things that went into it, uh, the car would cost 300 grand and nobody would buy it. So they had to figure out a way to become sort of a high-end Volkswagen, if you will. And that's my number one complaint with Mercedes, although I forgive them because they really had to do it. I think sometimes they take it a little too big. You know, you get into these A-class, B-class things, uh, these GMAs, all these little fecky things that are obviously just designed to be profit leaders. Yeah, you know, I can fault Mercedes for whoring out their badge that way, but uh, for the most part, this is the kind of stuff they had to do to survive. Anyway, fast forward to um, 2007, at least in the United States, and this third gen CL comes out. Uh, it's like the, I don't know, like the fourth or fifth generation S class. Uh, they don't go back as far as you think. They only started with that um, uh, 116 car in the 70s. But uh, the th this is the third generation CL, and honestly, it's probably going to be the last Mercedes that I really like on a visceral level. And uh, that's why I still buy them when I see them. And you don't see too many coupes uh, like this one. And I think it's just absolutely awesome. Uh, one interesting feature is it weighs about 4,600 pounds. So it actually weighs more uh, than the correlating S-Class that it's basically a, you know, smaller sibling to. Uh, you know, it's, it's a big, heavy, well-engineered tank, and uh, I think it's very aggressive looking and still maintains a certain elegance and, uh, of course, some throwbacks to uh, the people who like the vintage Mercedes while being very, very aggressive. Uh, you know, for instance, it kept the side windows without the B-pillar, uh, so you can run all those windows down front and back, and you have this giant swept open-air side, uh, the way that American hardtops used to be. And there's the phone. Wonderful. People know not to call me at the, you know, I'm just not a good phone guy. I don't text well, I don't email well, I don't talk well, uh, probably because I just want to live in a friggin' cabin somewhere in the wilderness and not let anyone within rifle range. Uh, that would make me the happiest, but eh, what are you gonna do? So I lost my train of thought there. But anyway, it's, it's sort of got all these sort of little throwbacks to Mercedes-Benz classic lineage, while at the same time being, you know, I will say there's an elegance to it that surprises me. Um, uh, usually these S-Classes are just big, humorless sedans that just look angry and pissed off and weird. They're just not happy cars. And uh, this one does have a sort of jovial quality to it, while at the same time being very aggressive. I mean, I think if you parked one of these things next to a 126, it would look like one of those F-22 Raptor fighter planes being parked next to a P-40 Warhawk or something. I mean, it's unbelievable what... Uh, I don't know how many years, 30 years of development, what, what they did to cars and how far they came. Uh, you know, some people say they came too far and they're too weird, but <clears throat> yeah, I'm one of them as well. All right, so there it is, and I think it's just a great-looking car. Uh, it got a redesign in 2012 in the United States, a little bit of a refresh, uh, different fender treatments, different light treatments. It went to full LEDs all around. Uh, this one has the AMG Sport package, which is absolutely lovely, and frankly, I think, does away with the need to opt for the much more expensive AMG versions of this car. I mean, honestly, for most people, going 0 to 60 in under 5 seconds would be enough. You don't have to get in 
into the uh, insanity of the rest of it. Uh, CL is, stands for, you know, it's there, again, there's more debate about this, like there used to be with the SL, uh, whether it stands for Coupe Light uh, or Coupe uh, Luxus Class, Coupe Luxury. You know, I'm going to have to go with the latter because at 4,600 pounds, pfft, you know, there's really nothing light about this car. It is a big, heavy slug driving around. I'm gonna, again, I'm going to make this a quick review. I'm not going to get into the history of Mercedes. I'm not going to get into how uh, Carl Benz's wife made brake linings for You know, I can't get a friggin' sandwich out of Tracy. She wouldn't make me a glass of water if I were in the desert. And here this guy, his wife invents brake linings for him. You know, some people are just a little bit luckier in life, and uh, I do resent them. Uh, real quick aside, as I'm sitting here and we're on the subject of Mercedes, as I pulled into the driveway this morning, I saw that Peter had his date machine out. Now, you know, I mentioned in the uh, uh, night vision section uh, what he was probably doing last night, and this just confirms it for me, because only when the finest Tinder ladies are around does Peter pull this thing out. And, and here it is. It's a uh, G-Wagon 6x6. Uh, it's obviously insane. Uh, not many people know that there's a, an historical uh, relevance to this car. Uh, Adolf Hitler used to tour the battlefield in a 6x6. So I think Mercedes-Benz was a little bit cheeky bringing it out. But here's the deal. When you are terrified, and I mean when you are living in absolute abject terror that people are not going to know when you've arrived, then this is probably going to be the vehicle for you because very few people are going to miss it. Uh, I mean, honestly, when you pull up somewhere, people are going to say, oh, look, somebody's here, and they probably wrap or, you know, wear a turban. And uh, anyway, there it is. It's just absolutely wretched, wretched excess, completely insane, and... <laughs> I mean, I don't know, you know, it's not my style, but uh, I bet there's uh, a lot of people out there who would dig it. So anyway, there it is. That's uh, the G-Wagon. So that must have been a hell of a time last night. He's probably going to be sleeping till noon. Let me get back into this car. And I tell you what, again, in the spirit of making this a quick review, a gift to the people uh, in the comment sections who I think very rightly say, for the love of God, shut the hell up and start talking about the car. Please, I am begging you, uh, then this is going to be a gift review to those people. Uh, in fact, I've been thinking about putting a link at the top of each video that bypasses the whole, you know, weather thing, goat thing, uh, the variety of inane complaints that I obviously come up with and gets right to the point where I start opening the trunk. So I may start adding those to the videos uh, to help the people who just have no interest in shitty Florida weather and uh, the other stuff that I appear to ramble on about. But again, I blame the whiskey and the, um, and the narcotics. So let me pause for a minute and then we're just going to leap into the this car and make this the quickest review in the last four years. All right, so let's just do this. So here it is. I think the styling of this car is gorgeous. I am not ashamed to say so. I know I'm not always a big fan of modern Mercedes product. And, you know, this probably isn't modern anymore. Uh, just another sign of how old I'm getting. There's probably a vintage car now for all the hell I know, the way people look at them. Uh, oh, my God. It's fine. You know, I have an iPhone 10, and people want to take up canned food drives for me because, obviously, uh, I just can't be making ends meet. <sighs> But anyway, I think the car is lovely. I mean, you've got this beautifully arched rear window, gorgeous, slanted forward into a very low-slung, uh, curved roof line with this gorgeous crescent, again, with the side windows that all go down. Uh, you've got these big fender flares. Uh, this one has the AMG Sport package, which I think absolutely is a requirement on a CL uh, because it gives you these big twice pipes in the back. It gives you AMG-style bumpers, rocker panels. You get 20-inch wheels with you know, manhole cover brake discs behind them. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, th these cars, they're badged blue efficiency, which I don't entirely get because I thought that was a diesel thing when it came out, and I still haven't really 
understood why. But um, anyway, I mean, it's like the big vented, you know, giant rotor behind that 20 inch wheel. It's just absolutely beautiful. Uh, the mirrors are really neat looking, well styled. You got these little pickle forks coming out on the side for uh, indicators. You've got big aggressive vents in the hood. Uh, you've got these swoopy looking LED lights that probably cost $12,000 each if you need to replace one. Uh, more LEDs down in that uh, low slung bumper. And you know, this is a carryover for years. The original AMG Sport package, uh, the front air dam's kind of meant to simulate a Formula One, which it uh, of course does. And they've kept that styling cue for a long time. Uh, the body was designed by a guy named Gordon Wagner and uh, Peter Pfeiffer. And uh, as to the latter, there's absolutely no relation at all to Michelle. And I promise I didn't make that correlation uh, so I could put in any gratuitous photos of Michelle Pfeiffer, uh, up to and including, uh, you know, her just sort of skulking around in that Batman movie in a skin-tight cat suit. That is just not why I'm talking about her right now. Uh, I'm just not the type of person who would do that or prolong talking about it for the sake of adding even more gratuitous photos. It's just not something I'm going to do. And uh, honestly, the very idea that I'm doing that to put in even more gratuitous photos of Michelle Pfeiffer uh, is really, really offensive to me. And uh, I just don't think you should have brought it up. So uh, that's all I'm going to say about that and um, uh, it's just not cool it's just not cool at all but uh, anyway there it is so the 221s came out and frankly it had rx7 fenders and i don't care because i thought it was a great looking car uh, they've sort of done away with those on this i guess the cl never really had them to the same level anyway uh, but i think the styling of the car is just stunning uh, it was also a very expensive car i've got a copy of the uh, not the window sticker the vmi report there's a bird back and he's pissed And again, I haven't seen, you know, I haven't seen the goats. I don't know what happened to them. And I haven't seen any cats lately. So I'm not entirely sure what happened to them. And I'm starting to think there's some trouble here. And uh, I wonder, you know, what's become of all these animals? Not that I'm complaining. Uh, that cat was enormous and it scared the crap out of me. Uh, but uh, anyway, it's a very expensive car. It's uh, the base 114. Uh, this one as stickered over 128, uh, which you could say is shockingly expensive. But if you're a Bentley buyer looking at a $200,000 Continental GT, this car adequately competes with that. And uh, in that case, you could sort of view it as a bargain. So I guess it depends on your perspective. Uh, you know, if you're, uh, you know, Peter style with your, you know, fancy cigars and champagne and solid gold toilets, then yeah, this car probably is uh, an affordable bit of luxury. But, uh, you know, if you're like me and you're slogging through the summer trying to sell a car or two just to make ends meet, making soup out of ketchup and water, uh, then, uh, you know, it's shockingly expensive. <sighs> anyway, let's just get into this one. I promise to be short and I'm going to stick to it. There you see the Formatic badging, you see the CL550 badging. Uh, this one in 12 had got a new engine that was much smaller than 5.5 liters, but uh, they kept that badging to appeal to Americans. Uh, in fact, this badge uh, was badged as a CL500 uh, in Europe. Uh, you see it as one of these power trunks, which I've always felt is kind of a glitzy, meaningless feature. I mean, if you can't lift your own trunk, honestly, honestly, you're too rich to lift your own trunk. I mean, oh God, anyway. Uh, nice big area, nice and low overhang, so it's easy to get shit in and out of there. Sorry again for my bag of crap, but like I said, I have to carry around a pile of detailing supplies because of Dalton's crappy details. Uh, it has the little hang thing here where you could put plastic shopping bags, you know, so they don't roll around the trunk. Uh, also, if you see some real nice fresh roadkill, uh, you can pick it up, you can hang it from this, and, uh, you know, be ready to fillet by the time you get home. Uh, the infant containment nets in this one are shit. I mean, you can take your infant, toddler isn't even going to fit in there, uh, but an infant will. Uh, problem is, this is nothing. I mean, maybe he gets his little fingers caught in this and then he can't move, you know, he can't fully get out, but but uh, otherwise, it's just too easy to, uh, to overcome, and he'll be rolling around the trunk at no time. Uh, under here, 
<clears throat> and it neatly latches onto this weather strip, uh, is a neat little cargo area where you can hide all kinds of automatic weapons from the state troopers. Uh, you can have a little MP uh, machine gun up front. You could have an AR, really, that'll be maybe not a super long one, but it'll fit in the back compartment. Some extra, you know, uh, clips over there, and uh, everyone's going to be real happy with that. Uh, if you lift this up, there you're going to find the toolkit and the spare tire. And I can't tell you how many people... <clears throat> when I was showing these cars, back when I was selling, before selling cars made me completely friggin' insane, and it became worth it to me to just pay other people to sell them because I couldn't handle it after <laughs> 10 years or so. Uh, anyway, people thought they'd, they'd open this up and go, oh, the car has no spare tire. What do you do? Where's the spare? Well, there it is. You lift one more compartment, and uh, you got all your crap down there. Uh, and there, like I said, uh, get this back down properly. I don't know why everything, honestly, why does everything have to be hard for me? I think it's just my age. Uh, you press this and down goes the trunk, so you don't have to stress yourself too much on that. Have a look under the hood. Oh God, these are always hard to find. The one thing is this hood is actually pretty nice to lift one-handed, so one of the very few. All right, here it is, and it's weird because when I read some of the reviews of this car, they all called it a 4.6 liter. Uh, Mercedes-Benz itself badges it as a 4.7. So again, maybe it's like the Ford, the 5.0, the 4.9 thing, I don't know. Uh, but the fact that they can put an emission sticker on the car claiming 4.7 means that I'm just going to go with that. So uh, it is a twin turbocharged 4.7 liter V8. Uh, it replaced the 5.5. Uh, the 5.5 had high, you know, with the horsepower in the high threes. With the smaller displacement and more technology, this thing uh, had horsepower in 429 and over five, like 516 foot pounds of torque. Uh, so it's a monster. The good news is it's sort of the last V8 that I'm going to accept because ever since this thing, ever since, you know, this is kind of the first downsized V8 for this car, uh, everything's moved all this electric hybrid crap, which just drives me insane. I can't take it. You've got electric Mustangs. You've got all these snowflakes running around chipper about electricity. And, you know, fine, if you want your car to run on coal, you know, or nuclear power, that's great. If you want little Chinese kids you know, choking up blood as they're mining lithium for you in some pit in China that, you know, to create the precious metals you need for batteries, that, you know, fine. If that makes you feel good about driving an electric car, then God bless you. But I prefer uh, good old dinosaur fuel, uh, you know, that we know where it comes from. We know uh, people are getting paid very well to bring it up out of the ground, and uh, it's built the entire civilization uh, that we all enjoy so much. So, uh, you know, just... Anyway, uh, there it is. And that is, my, you could get some other engines in this. In Europe, I think you get some creepy diesels or hybrids. In America, forget it. It was all V8s. You could get the 5.5, uh, the 5.5 five turbo, uh, a 6.2 uh, that was badged as a 6.3. All of this crap goes on. Uh, and then two different V12s. You could get a 5.5 five V12 with twin turbos or a 6 liter V12 uh, in the CL65 uh, also with twin and turbos. And I mean, this is the stuff of Duesenbergs, man. This is the modern era car that most relates to me in terms of these insane, wretched excess automobiles from the uh, early 20th century. And I can really appreciate that. And uh, by the way, I'd also like to give a shout out to Dodge for keeping all that going. God bless them. Thank you for being the last car company uh, really focused in on just big displacement, high horsepower, tire burning crap named after Satans and demons. And <sighs> when they're gone, I don't know what's going to be left. So anyway, everything nice and proper under the hood. This is made into a seven-speed automatic that's pretty tried and true. And uh, in this car, it's going through Mercedes-Benz, very fancy all-wheel drive formatic system. Lovely. You see the mist up there on top. Um, what else? Yeah, I think we can just get in and go. So here's the uh, mirror. You see it as the blind spot. In 2012, a bunch of this driver assist crap came out. Uh, this one has keyless go. 
This is all standard stuff today, but you know, in S classes generally, it introduces new technology that soon is out on every car, and uh, these were no different. But uh, anyway, you can lock it with your thumb on that little button. Uh, just put your hand on the handle, and it opens up. Uh, these have double pane glass. Uh, that started out in that 140 car, and it was a much thicker, much more aggressive looking side window on those, uh, to the point that a lot of nitwits thought it was bulletproof glass. And that was in fact one of the key points that had me stop selling, when I, oh, that S-Class has bulletproof glass. Well, no, it, it does not. It does not, and and you know they would insist, and this is just the kind of crap that drove me crazy. Uh, but by the time this car came out, uh, the double pane glass was much more subtle and elegant. And some of the earlier versions, it would actually separate and become quite ugly. Uh, but I think by the time this CL came out, they had sort of figured that out. Uh, door panels all very nice. You've got the extended leather in this one, so uh, it's bunched out a little bit. But eh, what are you going to do? That's just the way it goes. Um, You've got this uh, very nice real wood uh, seat and door lock setup. You've got your memory seats. You've got your hot and cool seats. You've got your 84-way adjustable seats, lock and unlock. Uh, here's all your mirrors, your you know trunk controls, whatnot. You've got your Harman Kardon badge on the sound system. Uh, you got a funky little storage compartment here that's not good for much more than a pen or paper clips or perhaps a switchblade and a little bag of pills, maybe a little bag of coke up there. And uh, very very nice, lovely wood everywhere, which of course you're going to get for your uh, 130 grand. Uh, the seats, Mercedes always has the best in the business. Uh, I do like this. Um, I do like this big chrome pole. I think that's nice. And uh, that was a step up from what came on the earlier 220 cars. Uh, back seats, seating for two. Uh, they're very true to this being a two plus two car, even though you could have theoretically fit three in there. Uh, but you're gonna have two very chipper Canadians in the back with pretty good foot room, iffy headroom, and all kinds of funky, you know, wooden rollers. Nice place to put a nine mil there. No issue, you got a couple of nice vents there. And uh, then a big pull down. Uh, center console, more place for guns, more place for pills, and uh, a couple of cup holders that all seem to be working for the moment. You also have some headrests back there. Uh, but anyway, everything nice and proper, and you do have window switches. And just before I hop in, let me get that. I think we can run the windows down on this thing uh, by pressing and holding the unlock. So let's try that. You can. All right. And there you go. That's what I think is very cool, is when those are open, you have this big, giant space down the side, uh, reminiscent of 60s and 70s, early 70s American cars. Uh, this also does run the sunroof open, by the way. Uh, and then if you want to change that, just press and hold and lock. All right, very nice. <laughs> And then you've got illuminated door cells. In the little video I took of the night vision, I show those. All right, we're gonna fire it up by pressing the keyless go button here. You can hear that, uh, that V8 firing to life, all very nice. And uh, let me, oh, didn't show you that. I'll do that real quick. Oh God, I'm trying to make it short. Uh, it does have soft closed doors, so just get them kind of close and they suck themselves in. And uh, that's so a rich person doesn't have to exert too much energy uh, to drive the car. Uh, there you also see the uh, light up blind spot display. Uh, I had the defrost on again this morning. Oh God, that's hot. So let me get this down. Let me get some air going because it's hot as balls again. I didn't have to take photos of this car, so I'm not quite dripping yet, which is nice. I'll be able to dry off and I'm, you know, not getting some guy's seat all gross with sweat yet. Uh, this thing's absolutely loaded with stuff. So uh, over here, you've got your light switch. Uh, here's your night vision switch. And in fact, this is where I'm gonna pause the video to inject that part. And uh, there you see, it's only one dark. So good thing we did it earlier. So a uh, little pause here, I'll inject it and then we'll come back. All right, I'm running to uh, Peter's place to do the video on this car, and I know I'm about to run out of light, or sorry, run out of dark, and when I do, the night vision won't work, and I won't be able to show it, so uh, here is a, a quick demonstration of that. You know, it's utterly useless. Uh, it, it's operated by the switch over here with a crescent moon on it. It looks a little bit religious, but whatever. So when it's off, you get your normal analog, 
speedo when it's on you get your uh, you know your little night vision set up and uh, I suppose that's good if you know supposedly like a toddler or a Labrador retriever or, you know a woman pushing a stroller decides they're gonna run out in front of a herd of main S class late at night on, on a country road you know apparently you'll be able to see them better with this and then theoretically stop if you're inclined certainly don't want to mess up your body work but uh, so there it is. Otherwise, you know, I mean, really, it's just kind of gimmicky, but um, maybe it'll impress your friends. It did impress mine. Uh, also, you can see, like, the mood lighting in this car. It's a good time for that. You see it's glowing blue over there. Uh, that can be changed to different colors to suit your mood. And if I crack the door open, there you can see those uh, illuminated Mercedes-Benz door sills. So... Anyway, there it is. I think it would be very cool if this could be used to uh, evade the police a la Cannonball Run. Those two little Japanese guys in the Subaru. I think one was Jackie Chan. And, uh, you know, what they would do is they would kill the lights. They would turn on their glowing night vision glasses. Oh, my God, we're here already. And, um, uh, you know, they would hurtle by police officers at 130, you know, as they're, uh, you know, in the race. And I think that would be neat. Uh, but of course, the nannies at Mercedes, they won't let you have any fun that way. I tried. Can't turn off the lights when the night vision is on. So they've got you on that one. Bastards. Anyway, we're almost there and uh, do the video on the rest of the car when it gets a little bit lighter. Uh, this is the road where sometimes there's shitloads of deer uh, crossing the street, running back and forth, uh, you know, burying their teeth in their carnivorous hunting packs. You know, people seem to think I'm nuts when I say that, but I don't know. I think it's true. I don't know why the resolution on the camera, at least if I, you know, when I'm looking at the viewfinder, it just looks like a big blur, but it's actually quite distinct as I'm driving all over the road here. They're there, there, look at them, right there, right there. Looking vicious. <sighs> Thank God I'm in a big car. Anyway, um, so I'm going to pull ahead and turn this off and then we'll keep going. All right, so that was the night vision, which, uh, yeah, you know, useless but cool. Uh, here you can see a beautiful wood and leather steering wheel, the hand-stitched leather, you know, all very nice and proper. And again, I do think Mercedes had in mind that this would be a, look at that, you had an armadillo. I'm going to go, kid, where the hell is he going? I haven't seen one of those around here before, and I know they're carnivorous. I feel like Steve Irwin all of a sudden, but I'm sure I saw this then. thing is going to leap up and savagely attack me. I don't know where the hell it went. There it is. Gone. He's probably going back to get his buddies so he can come back and do some serious damage. You know, while I'm right here, real quick, because I'm going to show you, uh, the way you can tell a Mercedes with Destronic Cruise Control is that the star in the front, uh, which, by the way, the German uh, gates, uh, the German logo here means uh, domination on land, sea, and air. And frankly, I think the uh, War Commission at Nuremberg should have cut them out from using that. It's just a little bit too aggressive. Uh, but anyway, this is a solid plastic cover that hides the radar, the forward-looking radar uh, that uh, it uses to determine distance to other cars. Uh, you also have those uh, little buttons in the bumper for the, uh, they do not only the Parktronic and the parking assist that this car has, but uh, also are part of what uh, works with all the driver assist crap to, uh, you know, to keep you safe or keep you in your lane or all the other stuff the German nannies are interested in doing. The short video is probably out the window, but you know, again, you don't get too many armadillos looking pissed off, so I'm gonna have to back up to open the gates again. Anyway, so here you go. Here's your one, uh, you know, analog uh, gauge, which of course is digital. Uh, you can operate different stuff by going down into, uh, you know, you get you can have a speedo, you can have a trip computer, fuel mileage stuff. You go to the right, you get your navigation. When that's active, it'll give you the street turns and stuff. Uh, you get your audio, you get your Bluetooth. Uh, you can get into all the different, here's the distance display. That, um, 
that's the Destronic thing that shows you the distance between the car in front of you. There you see the two cars there with the exclamation point ahead of them. Uh, that'll go green when this will work in. <sighs> God, there's the whiskey. That will go green when this is working. And above that, the uh, car with the two poles on either side. It looks like a car pulling into a teepee. Uh, that's actually the uh, lane assist. So that'll turn green when it knows that you've found your lane and uh, are following it smoothly. Uh, the coffee cup is the uh, attention alert thing, the attention assist. Uh, you know, that's going to turn red and vibrate, shake the wheel. The minute it thinks you're screwed up, like I, it comes on, the, the coffee uh, cup goes red. It's like, you know, Bill, I, I pictured a better life for myself than this, the car tells me. You know, here, here I am with you in the car. You're driving like shit. You look like shit. You're not taking care of yourself. Uh, you're loaded up on coffee and whiskey and God knows what else. And this just is not the life that I wanted. And, uh, you know, it just, it just, it's just like a girlfriend. Anyway, you've got distance display there. You've got uh, ESP, the uh, electronic stability protection, you know, traction control. You've got pre-safe. Uh, that's going to break the car heavily. It's going to tighten the seat belts. It's going to lock the doors. Uh, if it thinks you're about to get in a collision, it's going to do all kinds of crap to help keep you safe. The attention we talked about, the blind spot there, you can see it's glowing yellow or amber over there, the triangle, um, lane keeping, you know, all this crap. And of course, the Distronic cruise control. Which is now vintage technology, and like apparently every Hyundai Elantra has it, but it's new to me, and it creeps the hell out of me, and I'm going to use it. I'm going to try it on this video, but I don't like it. Uh, settings you can get into, the running lights, the high beam assist, the extra speedometers, units. Anyway, all the crap that apparently you need to drive a car these days. Lovely stitched leather up on the top of the dash. Uh, here you have Mercedes-Benz Command Unit Cockpit Management and Data System. Uh, reminds me of Skamats from the Blues Brothers State County Municipal Offender Data System. Uh, you can uh, tilt and swivel. Uh, either one of these little displays towards you. Um, you can dim them, two controls there. Uh, here you see your passenger airbags off. You can go into a sport suspension mode with that. Uh, the Airmatic this car has, you see that little car with the arrow pointing up. Uh, I've pointed out in other ones that, you know, if you're a gangster, you're trapped in an alley, you've shot your, uh, one of your enemies and he's in front of the car, the back's a dumpster, you have to go over him, you're not going to move him. Uh, you can raise the car by doing this. Uh, it's going to, you see vehicle rising, hop out for a second to show you. And there it is, you can see the car is going up. All of a sudden, you get a lot more, uh, you know, and I, I recommend guys who buy these things, if your wife's driving one, turn that on. That way, they might not rip the front bumper up. I, apparently, some women and a few men out there figure that if they're parking in a parking space against a parking curb, if they don't hit it violently, then they aren't parked. Uh, other guys might just hang back a foot or two to preserve the bottom of their front bumper. But, you know, ladies like my girlfriend, if they drive one of these things, they're going to hit that thing as hard as they can. And uh, if they're really lucky, they'll launch over it through the plate glass window in the front of the 7-Eleven. But this will give you the clearance you need to get over the gangster's head, and uh, it won't uh, screw up your front bumper doing so. seatbelt back on. Again, I'm trying to keep it short. Uh, but uh, anyway, that's all of that. Let me get the car back down. I'm going to leave the sport suspension on and we'll have a quick look at the command unit. Uh, I'll find my way down to it. First of all, the prerequisite analog clock that it if you're in a luxury car, you have to have uh, this row of very nice buttons. They had gotten a lot of shit for the 220 car, the prior S-Class, for being kind of cheapened. And I think they took it to heart. So in this generation, they did make the controls a little bit more pretty. Uh, there you see the Formatic badge. You press this, and you've got your in-dash CD changer with, uh, you know, your little SD card. So you can put your crap in there. Uh, it's not enough for a snowflake, but it's a start. Uh, you push this thing forward, you get a little ashtray, which is great. Uh, you get some, for Mercedes, these are pretty simple, unbreakable cup holders, which is kind of a miracle, almost alert the Catholic Church level miracle, because this just isn't going to break. Uh, BMW, take note, it can be done. Uh, down here on this, again, lovely wood 
center console. You've got sort of direct access controls uh, for some of the command features. Uh, my favorite is this. You've got your dynamic seats. And uh, what that is saying is basically that a wealthy person, if they're taking a hard right turn, uh, they shouldn't have to feel themselves motivated by G-forces. And what that'll do is pump up the side bolsters uh, to hold you in place and uh, you know keep you from feeling like you're one of the common people. So that's nice. Uh, also nice is the massage seat function. Man, that was nice. I ran out of uh, memory on the camera, so to get my shit together. Anyway, that's got all your stuff in there. It's got the massage seats, which are fantastic. The dynamic seats uh, at the bottom, you still have it. it still has the AC controls. Uh, you get into your navigation. Uh, this is gonna change day, night, that sort of thing. You got all your different controls, topographical map, 3D map, blah, blah, blah. Have fun with that. Audio, you get into your, what do we have now? Yeah, you know, this is a Billy Idol song that I like. All of a sudden they got weird and strange and freakish. Uh, you know, the, the whole uh, Cradle of Love thing was a little bit unsettling. That Moni Moni song makes me homicidal. And uh, this was more of the era of Billy Idol that I could enjoy. Uh, but anyway, you see, you've got that. You've got audio, which is satellite radio, discs, cards, registers, media interface, USB. Uh, frankly, when I'm in this car, I run the auxiliary input off my phone so I can listen to some good country music that I'm enjoying. Uh, it has Bluetooth telephony. I haven't authorized my phone because I couldn't care less. Uh, you can get it. What, what, what is going on here? There we go. Video. Uh, you can play a DVD while you're at idle behind the green door or whatever you need. And then you get into all this stuff with multi-contour seats, the ambient lighting you can change, the sunshade. Let's put that up. There it is. That'll shade your Canadians in the back. Uh, change the, you know, all this crap that's just going to take a while to enjoy and figure out. You have to use the manual. Go back to Navi. There it is. Over in the glove box, we have a nice set of books. And here is that uh, VMI thing I was talking about. And there you see it, 128 grand for this thing. Uh, with, uh, you know, it's black with uh, cashmere savannah premium leather, all very nice. And uh, you can see the options that are added are quite stellar. So, uh, frankly, this is more than I paid for my first house. <laughs> Uh, you open up this guy here, and that's cool. That's a keypad for the telephone if you want to dial the old-fashioned way. Uh, this will run the sunscreen. This will run the rear headrest down if you need to. Uh, this is a setting for the transmission, uh, sort of an economy sport type setup. Um, volume, and that's a programmable button, that little asterisk. You can make it have whatever you want. Uh, here's a nice spot here for an elegant little German 9mm, some sort of Walther. And uh, here is an air-conditioned compartment for a turkey sandwich uh, if you want to hit the road. And of course it does have an electric parking brake, which I hate. Uh, seat controls, you've got hot and cool. I'm going to put my cool on right now. Uh, memory seats, and then this awesome thing, uh, with, uh, which lets you run the passenger seat. So you can see if someone leaves it in some screwed up position, you know, they put the headrest up, the way these cars always have them, uh, without stretching over to the other side, you can put that down and feel better about things. Uh, Andrew, because he's a bastard, loved taking these cars to lunch when he and I would go to lunch and he would secretly turn it to the right. Uh, it's the middle of August and then he would hit the heated seat switch and I wouldn't notice. And, uh, you know, so yeah, I'd be coming out of the outside sweaty already. Next thing you know, I've got 400 degrees up my rump and uh, he'd be giggling the way he does. So uh, you've got this little electric shifter on the uh, dash, which is all very interesting. Uh, those two lines that appear are because it's waiting to see if you're going to parallel park. And uh, if you are, it's going to guide you uh, into doing so. You see the little P comes up and uh, it'll uh, ask if you want assistance. <clears throat> all very, very nice stuff. Uh, you also have flippity flip paddles if you want to bang your way through the gears, which nah, I don't care. And then a fancy looking cruise control stock uh, that gives you your uh, Distronic thing. This controls the distance, so uh, you can have a lot of distance between the car in front of you or a little bit. And uh, again, even though it's vintage technology, it scares the crap out of me. So uh, I'm going to pause till we get to the end of the road and then we're going to hit it. I gotta say, it's not very often you get behind a. Uh, a GT4 on the road. 
Probably won't challenge him to a race, and certainly not around the twisties. God, what a sweet car, I have to say. Uh, all right, anyway, I didn't show you up here. You have this uh, electronic uh, compass. You've got a garage door opener. You've got a little place for your sunglasses. Uh, all very nice stuff. Uh, you can see my lane keeping assist is now green. Uh, I'm going to set my Distronic right now. All right, at 55, uh, we're going to turn the distance back. Well, I think I went off there. All right, you see it's uh, sensing that car in front of me and it's now slowing down. There's also a dump truck there. This is the part that terrifies me. I know that young people take this as a matter of faith and, you know, God bless them. For me, this is absolutely terrifying. It's lowering the speed of the car. Uh, it's sensing... I wish I could see the display. I don't know why it's not letting me do that. Uh, let's see if I can get that over there. Pre-safe, attention assist, blind spot, lane keeping, eh, whatever. Anyway, it's sensing the car in front of me and it's slowly lowering the speed up until the car will actually stop. And I mean, that is, I'm gonna get away from this stupid thing. And in fact, let's hammer it. is a ton of torque and a ton of horsepower. Uh, this car absolutely flies. Some of the complaints from it were that it had a lag. Well, I mean, it's a driver adaptive transmission, so it has to learn that you're a lead foot, and then it's gonna be a little bit more responsive on the tip end, I promise you. Uh, otherwise, all Mercedes have a lag. There's a nag, are you sure? Are you sure you wanna be hammering it? Yes, yes, yes I am. Anyway, there's the Distronic on again, and uh, we're going to see if this car will come to a stop. I'm going to bump up the, uh, you can do that with this. So. It's going to want to be going 57, 58, but of course we're not because the car in front of us won't. So here are the brakes, radar sensing. <sighs> Got my foot hovering over the brake. It's friggin' terrifying. And um, theoretically, the car is going to come to a complete stop theoretically. The good news is if it doesn't, I've got that pre-safe crap and uh, that's going to keep me safe if I slam into this Lexus at top speed. And now we're really going down. Now we're hitting the brakes hard. Yeah, and there it is. So the cruise control has taken me all the way to zero. I hear that's a nice feature if you're in bumper to bumper traffic because you don't have to sit there and, you know, well, wealthy people just don't want to use their feet uh, to uh, keep up with bumper to bumper traffic. Uh, you know, with this thing, you can just hit the, uh, hit the Destronic and it'll do it for you. Well, now we're flying. All right, so anyway, there it is. Uh, you know, is it a technological marvel? To me, it is. Probably not anymore. It's pretty run-of-the-mill. Uh, but uh, it is the last S-Class Coupe that I really, really like. And uh, that, uh, yeah, that matters to me. There I'm over, you bet I'm overriding. Uh, there it is. I don't know how long this review is, but I suspect that I failed. I blame the Armadillo and uh, all the other distractions. They were breaking again. That's pretty neat stuff, I have to say. So thank you for having a look. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll be back soon with something else. I don't know if I've got something for tomorrow or not. I hope I do. Uh, but otherwise, uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, oh, by the way, this is for sale. So yeah, if you have an interest, Auto House of Naples, autohousenaples.com, on the web, uh, yeah, at autohousenaples.com, on the phone at 239-263-8500. Thanks for having a look, and we'll see you with the next one. Take care.